So welcome back to this channel. Expat community in Japan is growing and so is the discussion on graduation options for students in Japan. So to set the context, as you know, social media is buzzing recently with 10th and 12th grade results. Uh, so is the case in Japan also. There are always a lot of discussions happening amongst parents here about what are the degree courses options after grade 12th in terms of university for students growing up in Japan. Some parents' uh, children have opted for universities in Japan itself and some outside Japan like Canada, UK, US, New Zealand, Australia and also in India. Today, uh, we are fortunate to have Manish Prabhune with us participating under the capacity of a parent who has been here in Japan for more than two decades and whose daughter has opted for a reputed university in India. In today's discussion, uh, it would be our endeavor to understand the journey of his daughter and their thought process as a parent in opting for this university and also practical aspects like what are the processes, fee and overall experiences. I'm supported with my co-host Makran. Along with him, uh, we would be getting into the discussion with Manish based on this flow. So the flow of discussion would be as you see on the screen right now. First background, which we already covered, then I'll in a short uh, moment, I'll hand it over to Manish for his introduction. Then we will go basically through students journey and, and then options for education after 12th standard, then zooming into course, country and university, then what preparation and other logistics things are required to get into the university. Then we would also like to ask about what it takes in for adjusting to the new environment and in the end reflections and suggestion towards parents and students. That's how we'll cover the whole session. Okay. So with this, I hand it over to Manish uh, to briefly introduce himself and walk us through his daughter's journey as a student till 12th grade to begin with. Over to Manish. Hey, Prem. Hey, hi, Makran. Nice to meet you, both of you guys. And yeah, I mean, it's a very interesting topic. I absolutely can understand that um, so many of the parents must be going through all of these kind of experiences. But let me just begin with a brief introduction myself manish prabune as prem already discussed uh, yeah it's been you know around uh, 22 23 years that i've been here in japan and that kind of was uh, something which i would say like it's not you know i mean it's, it's it's pretty you know wide in terms of like if you are so long in japan you kind of uh, try to have a very very you know kind of a different view of what the japan ecosystem changes you over time and in that sense, I would like to bring some of my experiences today to you in terms of the different stages that I've gone through in terms of experiencing these uh, pieces for my daughter. Um, and I'll also probably give you a few insights in terms of what probably works better in a post-COVID scenario. Okay, So it's uh, something that you have to be absolutely cognizant of as you start planning your kid's uh, journey from here on. So... Uh, Basically, uh, in terms of an introduction, I work for a company called Adobe. Uh, they are the makers of Photoshop. So it's usually like we love to help people uh, to, you know, fake things. Yeah, I mean, like you can create all Photoshop elements on your images and stuff. But no, I think I'll keep the discussion real today in terms of giving you a perspective of my daughter, whose, whose name is Nupura Prabhuni. And uh, she is born in 2002, meaning like uh, it's uh, uh, overall two decades of journey that began in terms of uh, we kind of getting her into the first batch of the kindergarten of the Global India International School in the Kasai campus. And uh, she was there for all the, you know, from kindergarten to grade 12 that's that's the whole journey that she has spent in that one school so it's always been with that uh, you know school that we've uh, seen her grow uh, we've also had a few of those hiccups in terms of uh, uh, at some times uh, we were looking at options in terms of uh, should we be moving our kid uh, somewhere in the secondary school to something like a k international or any 
uh, IB focused, uh, you know, curriculums. And uh, that was a discussion which always used to go in our day to day life over here in Japan. And uh, we did not look to move to a different uh, school because we had a problem with the school. But it was more in terms of that the other parents in the same ecosystem that we live here in Seishincho, many of them started to go to different schools like the K International and a few Eagle and, and there, there were many other schools that people were migrating to and we wanted to make sure like she has a critical mass of uh, students who are there in her class uh, so that she can get a good you know a social circle to work around and also make sure like she has got her you know curriculum to follow. Um, what I would certainly say is that uh, we did, did stay the course. Uh, we basically were at a position wherein uh, what after the grade 12 and should we basically start thinking about it from grade 8, grade 10 and I think uh, every parent probably starts thinking about these things right from the point that they get into the secondary school. So I totally remember that it was a kind of a shock for me when my daughter came to me to say like oh you know what dad i actually love to do um, science and uh, medical field seems to be something that i have a appetite for while i always uh, uh, basically thought like i mean given the fact that i am from adobe and i basically uh, in the field of sales and marketing i thought she would get into some um, rather cool area like an advertising or something like that yeah so i always yeah. thought like she's gonna be that you know cool kid around i mean speaking good english japanese and all of that stuff but the reason why i say shocked is because uh, this is what uh, usually happens is like we basically have our expectation for from our kids while they have a completely different uh, interest in those pieces and then it uh, comes down to a very simple fact that then you need to qualify whether the whatever the kid says is really the interest that they are basically talking about because it could be a fleeting thing right i mean True. they could have just just seen something and i knew that she had uh, paid a visit to the toyo university which was organized by gis and uh, it was just two days that she had been there and she was like, oh my God, I saw this telescope, I saw these organisms and she was talking all about it. And I was like, oh, okay, well, uh, let's see if it wears out. And it did not. And I think uh, as every parent, I was uh, very, very happy to understand that although I was shocked with the uh, context of science being her uh, you know, piece that she wanted to continue with, but it did continue. Even, you know, two months, six months down the line, when she was in grade nine and 10, she kept on repeating the same thing that she probably wants to do biomedical sciences is where she started to look at. And I, I sometimes feel that I'm a little bit lucky that I had to uh, basically, you know, kind of uh, go to a position wherein my daughter was very clear what she wanted to do. Prem, net net, I think uh, what I would love to say is that uh, as a parent, yes, I, I absolutely get it that, you know, uh, there is a student journey. I mean, I like it when you say like the child's education journey, but uh, I think uh, journeys are made of moments and those moments are important to understand that. Uh, you know, I mean, where where does the interest of your kid lie? Which, which is that moment which actually tells you or mm. gives you some hints in terms of where the uh, kid is probably thinking where it basically should, you know, by kind of thinking about it, about its career. And that's a very important point to understand. And I think, uh, I mean, since I'm from marketing, there is a term that we usually use called as moment of truth. I mean, it's about like, is it really the term, uh, point wherein you should understand that this is where the pivot is in terms of how you need to plan the next steps in terms of uh, which uh, college to look for, which courses to uh, choose and stuff. And it's a dinner table uh, talk that we usually keep on having on our uh, in, in our families, right? So I think it's a way of a discovery is what I would say. So I think uh, I'm uh, shocked because it wasn't uh, in alignment uh, with what I, ha I was thinking. I was happy because the moment was moment of truth in terms of it did lead me into continuity to say that yes uh, that was the place where my uh, you know daughter was looking to go to the next steps so that's where the process began i guess in the standard 8 to 10 is where we started to crystallize on the fact that yes 
uh, science is going to be the field it's not going to be engineering it's not going to be um, medicine in terms of like we asked her like why would you not be a doctor i mean if you are, are so interested in getting into the medical science uh, field she said no she has got very clear understanding that she would love to do you know kind of uh, r&d in terms of uh, working in a pharma company or in a some kind of a biomedical uh, you know startup wherein she can start you know uh, doing drug discovery and stuff and we were like kind of where do you get all of that information and I think the kids are so smart they are so fast and they basically learn through what they basically go beyond the curriculum in uh, you know grade 10 itself they are on youtube they are on instagram i said like uh, who all people do you follow and i could literally see uh, so many a uh, big list of people in the field of biomedical that she was already following on instagram and i think i was like i would have never thought about like following guys on instagram with that kind of a background i mean like okay fine if you want to follow somebody like ranveer singh yeah i get it but right. seriously I mean, the medical guys on instagram i mean is that the way the world is uh, around us and in, in that sense like i mean this is what you something you know i kept on discovering like even today she basically does so much of that i, um, I think that's yeah, really a good one ahead. that's really a good one like when you said like she was clear in what she wanted to do and she knew whom to follow uh, and then yeah. she was getting constant inspiration directly from those uh, inspiration right that's really great yeah and prem trust me i think uh, to a certain extent i can you know blame myself in retrospect saying like sometimes i was trying to ne- help negotiate her to uh, come to my th- thought process right i mean i was just trying to see how sure she was and how passionate she was but mm. i think uh, it's very important that you know we respect the choices that the kids make of course we should give them critical input so that uh, they are not you know kind of completely left on their own in terms of making that decision so it's a kind of a navigated process that you certainly need to have but i think uh, there will be ups and downs and a journey is always good to go up and down in terms Absolutely. of you know validating your uh, hypothesis so i think that's that was a uh, something i say like was a very uh, interesting thing that uh, i certainly had now that's in terms of her overall you know makeup in terms of where she wanted to go but then i think uh, if you are looking at uh, when we started to come to a few discussions in terms of where should she do it i mean like you've been here for two decades uh you would love to be uh, you know kind of having options closer to your uh, you know place where you are living and where you are born and brought up and uh, we went uh, through the hoops and loops to understand what are the options that um, a kid can have when they look for education in japan and to be very honest uh, i don't want to sound you know kind of um, you know predisposed in my conviction out over here but at least what i can tell you as of 2020 is that i mean that's still like two years back when we made this decision is what i can tell you is like at that point in time things will evolve but at that point in time i can certainly say with confidence that uh, for biomedical field uh, we did not have many options in terms of uh, a bilingual uh, you know kind of a course uh, or something that's basically done in english okay so okay. biomedical course in english in japan was something which was tough if you are looking for something like environmental sciences if you're looking for communications if you're looking for some commerce uh, courses and stuff you've got the wasedas and you've got a few other uh, you know kind of uh, universities which can certainly float the boat and i think there are very good options if i compare with what was available 20 years back i think things have changed a lot so depending on where your kid wants to go there could be options in japan and what i can certainly tell you is that Uh, whenever i mean given the fact that i do sales for my company uh, i always think like a sales person right i mean like i always look at the cost and what's the roi i mean everything's about roi roi right i mean like and if you do, want to look at the cost side of the equation uh, what i can tell you is like uh, education in japan would be the lowest side of that so the cost would be extremely low okay uh, you are looking at somewhere at around like 5 lakh 6 lakh yen i mean like that's something like you would even pay an indian international school here in japan or probably less than that right so i think i would say like if you are looking at options we basically went with three options that we were looking at one was locally here in japan which was very very attractive because that was like the lowest cost uh, in terms of what i have to shell out from my uh, pocket right i mean that's that's one point uh, point number 2 um 
the second option is well why not uh, us and uk i mean like that's like oh the western world yeah i i probably can do that and that's a kind of something i'll say is like the other option which you can look at and i think many of the parents uh, you know kind of do consider that as option number one uh, but the western uh, universities they came with the context saying like um, cost wise it was through the roof like you're looking at anywhere at around like at the bare minimum like the tuition this uh, you know expenses like, uh, daily expenses travel back and forth to japan and all of that stuff you would be looking at expenses closely to you know six million was what i was calculating in 2020 but uh, as you guys understand where things stand today with respect to the dollar and yen you could uh, essentially be looking at somewhere upwards to seven million is what i would look at so seven million uh, i mean like yeah it's 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 a, it's a cost right and i mean what do you get against the cost i think uh, it depends on every individual's uh, world view so if you believe like there's roi against that I think it makes sense. I think uh, we ourselves went through the process when uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, she's got all the options on hand. And we opted to go with uh, five universities that you can apply to in the UK. So we went with that process and uh, she got selected to all of the five. So we did certainly have options in terms of getting um, admits to Birmingham. We've got uh, Sheffield University. That was a very, very highly ranked university. And uh, I certainly can tell you like um, the brochures that come through the direct mail in your mailbox uh, here and you pick those magazines and stuff and you look at those old buildings and it's like, oh my God, like, uh, am I going to study here? It's it's very attractive. I mean, yeah. they, they basically do that, right? But that's how it always is when uh, Tim Cook or Steve Jobs gets onto the podium and tries to sell you an iPhone. Everything looks awesome. You buy it and after six months, you complain that the battery doesn't stay for a day. I mean, that's, that's how the whole uh, thing revolves right so that's the option number two but then there was one option which i don't look at like this is not a priority it's not like in japan west and then india for us like all of these options were at one shot we were looking at all the options with equal priority and i think uh, that is what i believe uh, was somewhere wherein we started saying like oh if you're gonna do biomedical is india even a good place to begin that kind of a study are we looking at a position wherein in India we've got that kind of a critical mass in terms of the industry, in terms of educational institutes, in terms of the professional courses? And uh, it was a big, big, big uh, challenge because trust me, I think coming to Japan in 1998, uh, I have lost uh, context of uh, the day to day things that have changed in Japan. I, I can literally tell you like my passport can show you around not more than four stamps that I have not gone for more than four times to India in these past 22 years. So uh, I wouldn't even say like I understand India much, right? I mean, it's a very warped reality that you start kind of getting. And to add to the problems, what I was looking at was like we have other things that happen. Say, for example, in my you know living room, we have this television going on. And on the Android TV in the YouTube app, we start looking at crime patrol, right? And crime patrol tells you like, oh my God, it's so unsafe in India. I mean, like, should I be sending my daughter to India? That's not really going to be the case. But I think these are the realities. Like, uh, I think we need to quit uh, not watching that stuff, but we need to quit judging stuff uh, from our distance. And that basically is something I would tell every parent that don't judge from a distance because the old buildings that are printed on the brochures are equally attractive and the safety concerns the, depicted through crime patrol are also something which are not actual the reality on the ground so i think uh, don't believe the digital media alone i think it's more in terms of like you need to start speaking with people who are actually on the ground there. And what I mean is that not speak with any Indian. I think I was very uh, lucky that I got to connect with three people who were based uh, in Japan. They have done their long careers in Japan, but have sent their uh, kids to India to learn. 
So someone was doing his engineering in Pune, somebody was in Manipal in Karnataka, and uh, he was doing his robotics course out over there. And these are the people who have gone through that journey. So I think learning from other people's journey is actually much more real than mm-hmm. looking at self-serviced content on a web platform, which mm-hmm. can sometimes you know cloud your uh, decision making. Okay, so that th- those were the three elements. What I can certainly tell you, India is not cheap. Uh, in terms of cost, uh, as I said earlier, Japan is the cheapest. Uh, obviously, US and UK are the you know they are going to be extremely you know taxing on your wallet. While India comes somewhere in between, you have to spend money. Trust me, it's not like you send to India because uh, it's going to give you uh, you know some you know uh, cheap option to go to. No, it's not cheap sure, at all. And if sure. you're looking at going to a doctor's uh, degree or some MBBS or something, trust me, you will be actually spending many times more than what you can even do in the UK. So right. it's 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 pretty costly depending on where you go. And even when we are today working with our uh, kid in Manipal, I think uh, we pay the NRI prices. So they are like kind of five times the fee is five times than what the local uh, kid pays in India. So in that sense, uh, it's something that uh, we certainly went through the loops to understand what the options could be. Okay. Um, so fees was five x five x the normal I'm one. Want to take a pause there? Yeah, yeah. Go yeah, ahead. sure, sure, sure. Five x the normal one, right? You mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the normal kid in India, if he's paying uh, one lakh rupees per you know year per academic year, you are gonna pay five. And I'm just giving you five times. Yeah, yeah, so just just uh, rough it. Got it. Got it. But, you know, thing is gonna be like, okay, the locals are gonna pay two. You are gonna pay ten, and uh, that that's how it goes. So in terms of the universities in the Western world, um, yeah. in, uh, for, for those universities as well, did you speak? Uh, with any uh, you know uh, people who are doing some research or whose kids have studied there or did you get like for yes. example Birmingham or Sheffield uh, yeah, yeah, what type yeah, yeah. of so I can tell you like uh, we basically spoke to the seniors of Nupura who were in GIS and ISJ and mm-hmm. uh, also people who have been to other uh, you know uh, you know schools like the one in Hero and the K International and all of that stuff. So we did speak to those uh, parents and those kids too. Uh, okay. It's always good to get that reality. How did we come with that definition? Like Sheffield could be one of the good uh, universities. I mean, you can't just right. believe the university rankings, right? No. Because that may no. not be the only uh, way yeah. to go about it. So we spoke with uh, one friend of, uh, you know, one friend of hers, uh, Simran, who was basically, uh, you know, in Sheffield at that point in time. And that allows you to get connected with the, sometimes the staff in that college uh, who Mm. can actually answer your queries better. Uh, In today's COVID world, uh, they are absolutely responsive on uh, emails and chats and stuff. So I think that was something that she did a lot. I think we should certainly try to reach out and try to understand as many things as possible Mm -hmm. in terms of what that university has got. I mean, and there are some serious issues. Say, for example, we came to know like um, the drug abuse, it was high. Uh And uh, you need to make sure like, uh, you know, I mean, it looks a, a awesome university. The ranking is very high. The course is awesome. But then the friend on the ground tells you like the, these are some things that uh, you shouldn't worry if you are not going to be part of those problems. But then you are in that kind of a university. You are in that kind of an environment and you need to figure that out. And trust me. definitely need to know the pros as well as cons. And, then, right. you know, Absolutely. and trust me, I think, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, years. same goes for even India. I mean, even in Manipal yeah. University, uh, there are, uh, you know, uh, gonna be cases once in a while reported in the press, right? So, mm. Uh, mm. how much should we think about it? I think that's something is something that is, is individual's uh, will, but I think you should be at least cognizant of uh, getting information beyond the course i think mostly what happens is like we look at the brighter side of the equation which is a good thing but then i think we should also look at what are the other points that we should be considering because trust me at the end of the day your kid is gonna go uh, as you know as an individual probably staying away from the family for the first time Absolutely. and you need to prepare them uh, mentally to make sure like uh, they are up for it uh, they wouldn't uh, have to you know depend on other things in terms of the 
you know usually uh, the you know safe environment that a uh, family in japan provides to them so i think i think those are some real concerns uh, some uh, i've seen cases wherein people have got homesick uh, people who have gone under depression sometimes i've even seen uh, you know parents and kids going through that hoops and loops to figure out like oh the expenses are so high that there is pressure put on the kid to perform and this and this stuff which sometimes uh, creates friction in a family and then you don't know how that uh, kid is going to react when it's going to be so far away from you they might mm-hmm. not expose everything that they might and they are very good at concealing on a zoom call or a, on a teams call right mm-hmm. so i think uh, these are the realities which we certainly looked at like if it was japan it's the best of all the worlds so you get good cost a uh, good roi i think uh, but only uh, caveat comes in like uh, if your kid is already born and brought up in japan you would want to think like uh, has the kid got enough exposure i think what people look at is like not because japan is not good or bad or i mean that's not that's a judgmental view you can't just generalize one single country like that right i mean there could be very good courses and some very good things but then i think people want exposure and they then say like okay let me send them to a different uh, paradigm let them look at the western way of thinking let them look at an indian way of thinking so i think that's how we started to go to that route like yeah india could be one option okay okay now i'll just basically spend the next 2 minutes frame in terms of uh, giving you a little bit more on what india how india and why india okay so i'll yes. get a little bit more on that side but i'll pause for a moment if you have any questions at this stage i'm more than happy to actually get more questions i think that that would make it more interactive for us okay i think uh, no i think you have covered the ground uh, quite clear like this is this was the section where we wanted to understand like <clears throat> when you start this journey what what scenario you start looking at right what what is the picture you are looking at and i think you painted it properly saying like for us being in japan default is japan we start thinking from there then yes. of course the other popular thing is yeah oh, why not west and yeah. then we start thinking about okay there are other options also we have done our own education from india we still believe in that education system why not india also right and then you start so i think now the picture is clear now uh, i think it's a segue properly like start how did you zoom in i think course wise the yeah. nupura has selected that understood but now more about the country as you said why where and what about india yeah, yeah, so that would be great uh, makran if you want to add anything uh no i think it, this is good um, okay. so i think most of the, most of the students are first of all confused in terms of what to do after mm. 12th grades so i think nupura had already uh you know decided based on her research that she wants to pursue biomedical science mm. so that was a major uh you know decision but in spite of that as we understand talking to manish there are so many several other factors to consider as to where to study or which university which country so yeah so it's it's, it's interesting and uh, yeah so we'll look at now for uh, you know so okay. zooming Yeah. perfect over to you manish back okay, so prem i think let me just give you a lighter side of this discussion okay um <coughs> so uh, okay let, let me begin at the point as, in terms of like uh, how how do you get all of this information i mean how how do you begin i mean like you are doing your career here you know as a salaryman here in japan you're literally working your day like from 9 to maybe evening times you're still continuing doing your work and stuff it's sometimes very tough to get time to you know kind of do some due diligence or do some discovery in terms of which are the universities what are the options and uh, it comes down to what the kid can do by themselves Mm. and what the the parents can help them in that process so i think uh, the second part was that if i i mean if i give you a measurement of sorts i would say like my wife was instrumental in around 80% of the discovery and research and information gathering in terms of uh, what was nupura looking into what were the options that she was considering and then validating those uh, options so i think uh, thanks to shilpa my wife uh, whatever nupura was digging out and you know kind of bringing in terms of information to us she was first uh, you know helping her uh, figure out a lot many things and i was spending maybe 20% so it's like and kind of, oh i'm the final manager man nah, nothing of that sort but i think uh, i'll tell you how immature things can get and the lighter side of the discussion is that uh, it came to me in grade 
that uh, Nupura and Shilpa came to me to say that, hey, you know what, there's this amazing university called as uh, Manipal University and that could be one of the options. And I don't know why, but somehow I thought Manipal was some place in Sikkim. I had no clue as to what Manipal was, where it was. That is some Manipal Sikkim University, some ad that I had seen somewhere. And I always thought like Manipal was part of Sikkim. And I was like, oh my God, this is Northeast. Like, uh, uh, what are we going to do? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, is that a good place to go? I understand it's close to the Chinese border. I mean, you think of anything and everything. right? I mean, like, it, those are not unwarranted things that you're uh, thinking in that sense. But what I'm, I essentially want to say was like, I, it was a pleasant surprise to figure out that Manipal was uh, somewhere just next to Mangalore. And I was like, oh, okay, so this is uh, based in Karnataka. And the reason why I'm trying to say this is because uh, we believe that we know a lot about our own uh, country, but then it's so wide. And, you know, a Absolutely. simple word like Manipal was something that completely, you know, disrupted my thought process. So I went through the hoops and just to figure out like what this university was to figure out that, ah, okay. So Mr. Satya Nadella of Microsoft is a graduate of this university. Ah, okay, well, that's another data point that I can start looking at. But this was not the only university that we thought about. So what we wanted to get for our daughter was something that we started to say like, okay, uh, is she okay to basically go to a metropolitan city like a Mumbai wherein she could be literally be squashed in a train for maybe one hour just to reach to the destination that she probably wants to go to. I don't think uh, we wanted her to have that kind of an experience at all. So we said like what works best for her, given the fact that she spent 18 long years here in this kind of a serene environment of uh, Edogawaku Seishincho, uh, a second tier city looks good. But the university has got to be the best. I mean, we certainly can't, you know, uh, do any, you know, kind of, you, you can't play with that. I think you need a very good university, but you also need to that to be in an environment which was much more conducive to what she's used to uh, back here in Japan. I think uh, that is where we ruled out all the universities in Delhi and, you know, Chennai and stuff, because we were not so sure whether we wanted to go to that kind of, they're not even metros, they're like kind of megalopolis megapolis is what I would look at. So these were like kind of like, uh, you sometimes get lost and we wanted to make sure like uh, we wanted to have a little bit more of a settled lifestyle for her. So Manipal was one. Uh, We still were okay with, uh, you know, on the outskirts of Bangalore. So there was... Uh, another uh, college, which I, I mean, that name just doesn't come to me uh, very quickly. I'll certainly let you know that. Uh, Makran, if you can probably Google uh, a women's college in um, Bangalore, it's a pretty famous one. And uh, I think that was one more thing that we certainly did evaluate for her. Uh, third, which we basically looked at was uh, Pune, which wherein we were uh, we applied to a college called as Ferguson College in Pune. Uh-huh. And, uh, that was one more thing that we certainly looked at. Uh, there was one more thing, which was IIT Hyderabad. There is a biomedical uh, course even out over there. But then we were sure like the IIT has got a different process. So there was an element that if we have to go to India, uh, we will have to be with that uh, country's process, right? I mean, you have to give a IIT JEE. And uh, given the fact that my daughter is already trying to just run through the daily, you know, grind here for the CBAC course that she was having here, uh, again, attempting a JEE was uh, something which we believed was a, in, you know, investment of time and, uh, uh, you know, an investment of energy also. And we said like, no, we are going to choose the right horses to ride on. Uh, we are not going to go to IIT as of now. If we have to take the IIT option, uh, she can take a break here after her 12th, give an IIT GE, and if she clears that, then she can go to an IIT. No worries at all. So what we essentially were trying to say was like, uh, let's not basically crunch too many things into that one single year of uh, grade 11 and 12, wherein right. uh, there are so many things to do because you have to apply for the UK colleges. You have to apply to the US ones. You have to also apply to some universities in Japan. And you also need to do something for India. I think it's stretching yourself too thin. So we were sure like as to what are all those pieces like we filter out 
that we are certain not gonna do as of now and i think we filtered out iit as an option in grade 11 itself we said like it's too much of a time investment it's uh agreed that it's the top-notch college that you've got in uh, there but then if you have to get there yeah we can certainly do that but then why not uh, basically take a drop year and uh, uh, you know a break year not a drop a drop year has a negative connotation yeah. for some time of a while but a break year should, could be something that you could basically go to an IIT kind of a situation wherein you could uh, plan to be there. And I can tell you one thing, I'm just skipping a few things here, but what I can certainly tell you is like uh, all of these IITs have got biomedical courses that they even do online these days. So Nupura did one of those uh, courses for a month uh, last year when she was doing her first year in Manipal. Oh. So she also got that, uh, you know, IIT exposure in that sense. I mean, it's all about collecting different certificates and prayer. Absolutely. Up right so yeah so uh, we basically were, went to these four colleges uh, we basically thought that um, the college of manipal was something which was a very small university town uh, i'm not sure if everybody knows but uh, it's one of the highly dense mobile networks in india it's number one so the maximum number of mobile phones in a particular locality in India is actually Manipal. I mean, they've got over 8,000 students studying there. I mean, it's a huge campus. And I think uh, the reason why I'm quoting this is because we are so used to basically sending an eye message or immediately FaceTiming our kids and seeing their face the moment that we want. You want to make sure like uh, you have got all those infrastructural capabilities in terms of electricity, water, uh, the cellular networks and uh, something that needs to be, to be there as a given for us. Right. Absolutely. And I think Manipal fit that bill. I think we were very comfortable okay. when we saw those pieces in terms of it was a very, very well to do in terms of infrastructure. Uh, the college uh, actually helped us because the moment we said like we are an NRI, they basically took us down a very different path. They basically showed us what are all the uh, facilities, amenities that are there for NRIs. So there are hostels, there are hostels for Indian students, there are hostels for NRIs. And I think those hostels resemble anything close to a three star or a five, uh, I wouldn't say a five, but at least a three star hotel. I mean, like they've got like granite floorings, the uh, bathrooms are awesome. And I think uh, there is nothing that you can complain about. I think the only thing probably you would be complaining about is uh, not having a heated toilet seat, but you wouldn't need a heated toilet seat in Manipal when it's always going to be humid and a little bit, you know, kind of a hot, if I, I have to say that. So in that sense, I think uh, you don't really miss any comforts. I'm not saying luxuries. It's about having the regular comforts that you're used to. And I don't think we were ready to make any compromises on that. So I think uh, we don't want to give our daughter, a, you know, a Ferrari to drive to the college, but certainly the comforts in terms of having good food, clothing and all those areas of you know kind of going for a regular shopping and stuff like that i think manipal was a extremely good discovery that we basically got okay it's not the only college which has all of these stuff but then i think uh, we were very happy that uh, the college was well equipped to handle not just uh, local population but also the nri population which i'm not sure of the numbers but at least the university advertises it at somewhere at around 23% of the uh, students on the campus are coming from places like Dubai, some coming from Singapore, uh, my daughter coming from Japan and stuff. So it's, it's a mixed crowd that you get there because there always will, will be a different way of how a regular kid uh, who goes through the grind in an Indian society things and how a uh, kind of a little bit uh, you know kind of uh, um, you know a supported kid in japan things i mean there is a yeah. difference in the way uh, kids think in different contexts and different cultures and although we know that uh, internet has leveled out a lot uh, there are still some essential differences and i think uh, we wanted to make sure like we get her into an ecosystem which was not complete local population, which was going to be the case if we would have chosen Ferguson College uh, in that sense. 
because ferguson college was all about uh, local indian uh, you know kind of population out over there uh, we come from pune so that's the reason also why we selected that one as one of our option but it could have been a complete uh, local immersion and i think uh, manipal wise we were lucky because we got to get into a little bit of a nri and local population space which is much more conducive to see different patterns of thought that she basically loves to even today given the fact that she's already 2 years there i think she's certainly enjoying that side of the equation so i think yeah. manipal so how you, did we come right. to that i think that's the, that's the detail yeah yeah, yeah. go ahead mak so no, i think that was very important point that you know uh, i mean children like nupura who have been brought up all their life here in japan and so basically when they go to india for studies there is all there is already some culture shock in a way that uh, you know they have been going to india once every one like one year two years on vacation but that's mostly for one month um, or at the most right so i think uh, exactly. growing up here and going back uh for full time education i think that probably as parents we cannot uh, you know uh, correlate much because we have stayed in india a lot of years and also in japan a lot of years so but for the children i think it's 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 a culture shock so yes. i think yes. yeah as you mentioned i think if you have if you are taken care of other factors in terms of having a good infrastructure and uh, you know hostel facilities etc so so that they can basically focus on studies you know that's that's what yeah. is the end goal so yeah yeah I yeah mean absolutely absolutely and trust me i think uh culture shock yeah I, i absolutely get it i i i absolutely understand what you're trying to tell me it also comes down to you know kind of how the upbringing of the kid happens uh, in individual homes right i mean like everybody's got their own individual tastes and i think it was a sort of a coincidence is what i can say is like i think uh, we basically always had the you know what's that tarak mehta ka ulta chashma i think they basically talk about uh, that this they got a punch line they they basically say like asli maza sabke saath aata hai and i think uh, if that kind of a uh, uh, media is continuously going in your home you are watching it maybe for one or two hours every day and the kid is exposed to that kind of thing then that uh, culture shock can actually be absorbed at a little bit different level i think uh, it's all about how you basically bring up your kid what kind of values do we tell our kids and there is no right and a wrong value what i'm only saying is like the kind of uh, upbringing uh, gives you a direction in terms of where your kids going to be and i think if, if you basically watch tarak mehta and you, if you allow your kid also to watch bts which is k pop which my daughter loves a lot and she's watching a few western uh, you know stuff and all of that she's basically somebody who can actually gel with any of those backgrounds i think if we had to make a choice by going to uk she would have uh, certainly had some culture shock even in the uk side of the equation trust yeah, me if she would have gone to a japanese university although she is uh, born and brought up in japan she was still with an indian school out over here she would have a different culture shock if she would have gone to japanese so i think the culture shocks always going to be there it's just that uh, we have to uh, bring up our kids in a way wherein they are able to you know kind of have that inclusive element that they can start you know kind of getting different patterns and adjust accordingly i think uh, contextual thinking uh, is something that comes sometimes naturally to kids who are in india because they see very very different uh, patterns in the society uh, in japan we are somewhat you know kind of isolated so i think we need to build as parents that kind of a perspective that uh, you know you need to go with the flow adjust with what comes because not everything will go the way you want it and it will happen with every different the pattern that you will go whether you go to us uk whether you go to india it's yeah. always going to be there right right i think you summarized it well manish sai by saying like we don't want to give ferrari to our kids but at least those basic support system we want to ensure and that comfort zone at least has to be there in terms of the continuation of the lifestyle they have been living here yes. it's not like asking too much thing but it's like basic exactly. things right. which we are asking one one last question on this slide i want to ask is you, you talked about uh, how you uh, striked out iit or uh, pune's yeah. college uh, how, how about this women's college in karnataka how that went out out of the list yeah 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 uh, so what i can tell you is like uh, we applied to both of these uh, or rather we applied to all the three of the above manipal the uh, uh-huh. college okay. again pune is uh, okay. applied to all um we basically got admitted uh, admits from two one manipal and the college in karnataka okay so okay. i think mount carmel was the second college that we certainly had looked upon so we applied uh, we got admits in two 
we got uh, admit in Manipal. We got uh, admit in Mount Carmel and uh, we did not get the admit in Pune's Ferguson College. And that's uh, something that you have to consider when you apply in India. Mm. A Manipal mm. College and uh, Mount Carmel are private institutions. Uh, they've got NRI quotas and everything, stuff like that. While Pune is just, a, I mean, Ferguson College is like open category. Oh, yeah. and like you, they basically said like uh, in the open category, there are only... Uh, uh, 5% seats available. The rest are all reserved for uh, X category, Y category or whatever that right. is. And uh, the only five people who were admitted uh, had, uh, you know, uh, you know, scores at 98% or 97%. Well, Nupura was at 94. So at 94%, you don't get admits in India. So that's, that's the reality. So that's, that's, that's the reality that we have, everybody has to look at. But I think uh, the top two were the ones were in, in Manipal and in with Mount Carmel. We certainly got those admits. Now I'll tell you one piece out over here. Um, basically, what I can certainly tell the parents in Japan is that uh, in a post-pandemic and an after COVID, I shouldn't say after COVID, after vaccine, we don't know how it's going to end. So in an after vaccine world is what I would say is that it's good to have options. What I'm essentially trying to say is like you might plan for going to UK and we've seen like many people got admits in UK, but then they went into a blended system of learning wherein they said like, oh, you could actually sit in Japan and join over a Zoom call. That and happened think, a lot. Uh, yeah. That's like enough like, okay, am I paying in the yeah. I mean, I'm paying through the nose to get this stuff and am I getting the ROI? That's where the ROI starts kicking in, right? But I think uh, what I essentially wanted to say was like having options is not so that you are guaranteed of an option when you actually want to execute. No, 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 no. What I'm saying, having an option on hand in grade 12 will completely remove the pressure point from your kid. Is she going to get an admit anywhere? Because trust me, when you move from grade 11 to grade 12, because it's for the first time in your life that as a parent, you're going to apply for your kid. And as a kid, they are going to face the universities for the first time. You always feel that you're probably not going to get an admit to begin with. I mean, it would be quite complex. You don't want to have that fear of missing out. Like everybody wants an option in hand as a, oh, Mirko, ek mil gaya. I got one of that, right? So I think uh, we basically looked at the Manipal option because they were very early in the application process. Uh, b before we, be, uh, rather the moment she began her grade 12, they were very clear that, okay, you pass with these, these, these pieces, then you give this examination, this, this, this. And if all of that goes, then your uh, admission is guaranteed. So I think uh, getting an option on hand as early as possible is always a good thing to have so that uh, you are rest assured of at least one option on your hand and you can start concentrating on your grade 12 examinations and preparations so that the problem of what after grade 12 is basically out of the way. Okay? okay. So I think that's one thing which I will certainly tell people to give a consideration on that side. And Vish, when you say, you, when you say, sorry to interrupt, uh, when you say start yeah. early, is it around 11th you already plan? I think or... uh, as you start finishing your grade 11, uh, okay. what I would say is like, it is advisable that uh, before you finish your grade 11, uh, hmm. try to finalize five universities in every country that you want to apply to. Hmm. That's step number right. one. Okay. Secondly, what can you also finish off as a check mark on your to-do list is giving IELTS and giving your TOEFL. I think in grade 11 itself, Nupura completed her IELTS and TOEFL in the month of uh, February. So Feb was the time when she had done it. That allows you to have a two-year time uh, from then on when the scores are valid. So I think uh, completing those tasks in grade 11 itself is a good way to do. And if mm. even if you want to get your kid to a Japanese university, uh, mm. finishing off your uh, N2 and all of that stuff within your grade 11 itself will remove all the pressure points of what a kid mm. has to go in the grade 12. I think uh, begin early in grade 11. Mm. That's certainly helpful. Finalize universities, give a few of those inter, you know, uh, you know, examinations and stuff and remove them off from your to-do list. I think that was something we uh, did. I, I, ELTS and TOEFL, both of them, uh, we were absolutely very lucky to finish them off in grade 11 itself. Got it, got it. I think that's a very important point. Got it. Yes. 
Okay. Yeah, those, uh, yeah, those qualifications will touch, you know, most of the universities uh, all over the world. So they would yes. need English yes. proficiency or any other, you know, common. And now I'm going to give you one, uh, you know, a pitfall. Okay. Uh, trust okay. me, uh, this is something that uh, in hindsight, I always think that I could have handled this better. And uh, the one thing which I certainly believe was something that, uh, you know put a little bit of a pressure on my daughter was that uh, you need a kind of a essay you need to write an mm, essay mm. in terms of your application process with like mm. uh, uh, okay uh, i will i basically have got this background i am so passionate about what course i want to do i see that your university is doing xyz and i would love to be part of that discussion i, I mean i would love to be part of that course it's a standard format. You could go to a Grammarly.com or any other website. They help you with all the English corrections and stuff. Uh, they give you patterns in terms of how to better write an essay. But trust me, I think uh, I put my daughter in grade 11 itself to the proceeds to say that, okay, write a good essay. And I think uh, kids sometimes are uh, clear what they want to do with which course they want to do but putting that down on a paper i don't think we should follow it up too much i think mm. if you try to push the kid too much to get a very good written essay mm. uh, um, it basically put my daughter through a little bit of a what i would say through some irrit uh, irritation to say mm. like uh, it can be done in grade 12 i mean why are we pushing mm. so much to mm. do stuff in grade 11 itself but the whole point was like uh, when she went into grade 12, when she had actually had to apply, she figured out like, oh, my essay is already ready. So it's good to be prepared. But I think let's not uh, put too much uh, emphasis on getting a good essay because trust me, I'm not even sure whether the universities read those essays for an undergraduate program. They matter for a post-graduation. They certainly matter for a PhD because that's something how you basically are going to work in their laboratory and all of that stuff. But at an undergraduate level, I think regular essay written are good enough mm, uh, i mm. don't think they read at a very detailed level for all of those uh, you know myriad number of applications that come to their table it's mm. just a tick mark that they basically have like there's a decently written essay good good True. to go over True. so let's not put too much emphasis i think we uh, probably we wasted around 20 days wherein the you know she was writing something the wife was uh, checking once and then i was uh, reviewing it again and i was cha changing a few things and uh, there's no right and wrong way to write an essay right? but yeah I think, uh, too much emphasis was spent on it perspectives yeah. got it got it thank you very much i think uh i think in, in what you just covered is overall like right? uh how did you write from selecting india to coming yeah. up with the options in India and then drilling down to one university, yeah. one place. I think that is covered uh, in a very good way. And along with that, you also talked about what you should complete till grade 11, right? You talked about yes. ILTS, TOEFL, and N2. I think those are also very good points. Okay, yeah. so if that's fine, uh, we can move towards uh, more specifics of like uh, for this. Now, university sure. is selected place is selected yep. now uh, we'll talk about more about what preparations are required you partly talked about some preparations but we can retouch those points specifically in terms of admission procedure fees yep. duration post grad and other career pathways what you yeah, might sure. be going through that yeah yeah absolutely and i think uh, this 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 is something that you actually spend more time than the earlier preparation side of the discussion that we have had i think uh, you need to look at it from what I need to do in grade 11 and grade 12 in terms of my next quarter, in terms of like trying to say like, oh, I need to prepare these kind of certificates. I need to do that kind of a procedure. That is all is fine. But then I think this is a journey about education and it's mm -hmm. about like what is in store in terms of the, you know, options that you basically get once you're gonna be a graduate right mm. what are the career you know kind of pathways that you basically mm. have in terms of not just a job but if you want to also look at you know getting into you know kind of multiple activities because you want to go with like-minded individuals right you want to make sure you are with that kind of a framework mm. and does the country or the university have that kind of a critical mass of uh, people around that uh, ecosystem so what I can certainly tell you is that uh, when we finalized that, yeah, India could be a good option, we did not say that just go for your graduation and then we will figure out again some other options. What if you also need to do your post-grad in India? 
Mm. What if you are supposed to look at uh, a one year career in India to just get some experience first in the mm. ecosystem, right? And I think uh, let's be very, uh, you know, you know, very very upfront on these pieces. It's like it is a little bit uh, wishful thinking that oh, I will get graduation for uh, as a degree in India and then I'll come to Japan and then I'll probably will start applying and I'll land some job. It doesn't happen like mm. it really doesn't happen like that. I think uh, you need to be realistic that uh, you may not land a job here, and there are there are reasons behind it. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is like um, there are objective and subjectives in this discussion. When you do a uh, you know a course like a robotics or an engineering course or a computer engineering or you do biomedical engineering or biomedical sciences for that matter, these are objective courses. They mm. are basically universal. Okay. They are based on logic. they are based on the premise that what works through a data driven approach for your experiments will be universal you will do the same experiment in japan you will do the same in india and you will do the same out over there but if you are into things like film making if you are into architecture if you are in other uh, places where nupura's friends were trying to say like oh you know what i want to be uh, in law i mean these are uh, you know subjective uh, matters because they depend on a particular country they depend on a particular economy they depend on a particular region a language also sometimes comes in so if you want to study architecture and if you choose to go to uk as one of the friends of nupura went you are essentially learning the western architecture and then you need to be sure like is that the field that you want to do or do you want to go back to india and do some something different or are you more interested with the japanese architecture so it's very very contextual right so i think when we choose uh, these pieces let's be sure like uh, what are the post graduation options because that's going to define the trajectory for your kid absolutely right so i think if you are in objective sciences side of the equation things are a little bit easier because uh, if you get a computer degree it works everywhere i mean you you can program in java you can literally do java programming everywhere i mm. think that's something that you have to look at otherwise you are trying to look at going back to a different country and because of the context you have to sometimes relearn the things sometimes you do your medical uh, mbbs in india and it's not going to work in japan you can't say like i will become a doctor in japan that's not going to be the case i mean you have to redo stuff you can't even be a doctor with that degree even in the uk for that matter so i think uh, you have to first evaluate like uh, is your uh, study field a uh, objective one or a subjective one if it does it depend on the context of where you studied it is going to determine as to where your post grad and career pathways are going to be and in case of my daughter at least biomedical sciences the field that she's chosen was something wherein at least i can say like if she learns the basic protocols of drug discovery they will help her in india they will help her in uh, japan too so a pharma company in even in japan would follow the same protocols with yes. the drug discovery yes. and stuff like that so give a thought to that in terms of which country to choose because that is extremely important uh, to define which career pathways are open for you later yes so, yes yes uh, i'll double click on the part of uh, the overall admission procedure hmm. uh, admission procedure in india uh, can be a pleasant or a Uh, not so pleasant experience depending on where you apply and everybody can have a very very different experience swadanusare ho so what i'm trying to essentially say is like if you go with a manipal side of the equation or even when we went to mount carmel uh, we found that the admission process was a breeze okay while with ferguson college you call them you write mails to them you had no freaking clue of where you stand okay so it could be very very different in terms of uh, how you basically negotiate that uh, with manipal and mount carmel i can tell you for sure like everything is online i think every minute detail is available online they also connect you to their uh, alumni and stuff so you can speak with those uh, folks i think okay we were very very helpful to get that kind of a discussion uh, we asked like uh, are there events happening there are there exhibitions are there seminars and those kind of speaking uh, opportunities i think everything was made available to us uh, even before we landed the uh, once in manipal okay so i think all of that thing was absolutely something that i was very very happy with the inputs that i got with japan okay. make sure that uh, you should be extremely fast and extremely responsive to your mails uh japanese universities respond only on mails uh they are hesitant to pick up calls uh they can speak to you but they will certainly say like uh, whatever you are requesting me please send me a mail again 
okay so and once they get once you got their attention make sure that your response is very quick uh, because that uh, if you have a little bit of a you know kind of a drop in the frequency mm. of the communication if you if your mail is running uh, you know you have not replied to it for two days trust me then you know again things have to be worked out to get that attention so i think be a little bit fast with, with your responses on emails with japan but email is the only way to go with uk there is no chance of any email with any university there is a very very standard process of how you apply in the uk there is a portal it's centrally managed and so like you get an option of five universities that you can apply to uh, this is a standard portal which you have to go through everybody goes through that uh, you have to upload all your uh, responses your essays your marks and everything through that one single portal and it's a one single platform which allows you to go pan across in the uk to ap- apply to all of the universities out over there okay it's a i i have never seen so well managed process at a country level wherein mm-hmm. everything is at one single place and the experience that a parent experience is so amazing that everything is digital and you don't need to pick your phone even once to ask why this what this what should i do here if you figure out like oh okay but by the way this is going to be cbse what grade does that mean out over there all of those things there are good help forums you can write your uh, questions on those forums people respond back and it's absolutely a digital experience that you can look forward to so okay. hats off to the uk guys i think everybody should uh, emulate that right is that specific for international students the centralized yes. Uh, yes it's a centralized it's a centralized portal it's called as ucas ucas u c a s so ucas is the only way you can get into uh, the uk universities as an international student there is no and other way to get active of any course not just biomedical but other courses no, as well any any course any university across the united kingdom ucas is the only way to go okay and right. and it's one and of the best experiences that is- you mentioned uh, about japanese may i know uh, which japanese universities did you consider for nokura for uh, we went with uh, nagoya because they've got a very good biomedical course in english uh, but the number of uh, students that they basically taken from uh, the ones who are in japan is maximum 1 to 2 people only and that oh. kind of uh, is a very very low number of students that they admit we did consider osaka university uh we hmm. did consider ritsumei kan uh we did not get a biomedical course but i think uh, they have started a new course in uh, tsukuba university also so that's one okay. more of the options that you can look at uh we also looked at uh, kansai daigaku but hmm. uh, you know they claim to have a english course but uh, we got some information in reality that uh, well the professor comes in he tries to speak something in english and then he reverts back to something in japanese and then it's a kind of a mixed thing and we didn't get very good reviews of that actually the university is very highly rated but at least from a biomedical perspective i don't think they are ready with their english course offering as of now so try to figure out the reality how much do the japanese universities really do english uh, education extremely important to validate that mm. Manish, one more query on uh, Japan University side. Uh, there is also uh, this kind of uh, notion of that if you have a PR, that yeah. might be a hurdle in actually getting the admission as compared to if you are actually applying from India. Is that uh, right? Or so it's it's all market uh, demand and supply. So if they are going to get enough, uh, uh, you know, supply of students from India or uh, from outside Japan. Uh, absolutely it was a detriment we were not even allowed to apply to a few universities because we were a pr holder yes mm. that's absolutely the case that was there in 2020 2019 when uh, nupura was okay. in there was now 2020 what happened was that because of the borders getting shut down there mm. were a lot many vacancies right and then they were like oh we actually welcome pr so the situation suddenly changed for 2020 and 2021 but with 2022 i have heard again some discussions wherein the pr is again becoming a problem so it really depends on the time when you apply what is the social you know context that we are in if they have enough supply coming in from outside they say oh we actually got enough of those kids coming in so we are good 
but in case of uh, a covid situation they were like red carpets for pr holders so hmm. the things could be very different and when you say pr holders this is pr for pr holding for the kid or for the parent uh, no 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 it's a pr for the kid for the kid right okay got yes, it yes for the kid so you. you could have a situation wherein to you know bypass or skip the stuff uh, i mean you could look at like oh, okay the kid is going to go back to getting three year visas or something hmm. and being a long term resident here sometimes that also could be a detriment but i think uh, a pr was, status was something which we certainly did face in 2019 wherein many universities were not welcoming of those students got it got it okay thank you okay I, I think, so i think uh, prem let's be let's be very clear out over here i think uh, the uk is very well organized okay mm-hmm. but the basic premise is that their universities are getting funded because of these foreign international students okay right. that's why there there is that incentive but the funding from japanese government to the japanese universities is so high that it squashes any uh, you know incentive for the japanese universities to make that next effort to go and get students from outside who yeah. is asking for those outside students it is those companies who are saying like we don't have good uh, you know labor we don't have good people to work on mm. you know kind of the it technologies the ai robotics and stuff like that they are shouting but from a university perspective they are getting their money from japanese universities very well funded awesome infrastructure out over there so they got nothing to complain right so should we be telling the japanese government to cut down on their <laughs> budgets I, i don't know about that but uh, that's that is a structural problem yeah. as to why yeah. japanese universities may not be as helpful or as uh, interested in getting uh, you know kind of international students or uh, you know yeah. like students if in that sense while uk is like absolutely uh, uh, laying out the red, red carpet the reason is like the budgeting process is very different all right there is no particular business case for japanese university right like unless unless that is there they would be doing that as Got of it. now as of now i don't see it it's yeah. a nice to have oh we are uh, yeah. diverse in inclusion university we got uh, two three gaikoku jins from outside done check check done that mm. that's how it mm. yeah. that's it okay i think then we covered uh, uh, india japan uk uh, i think that's where and the major same for us i mean us, US wise you've got something called as sat like i mean uh, scholastic aptitude test like sat is something that was at least there in terms of us like you have you have that uh, uh, they are saying like they're going to retire the sat uh, system in a few years i don't know how that's going to work but in us the whole idea is like they've got a central way of you know doing that uh, you know evaluation so the sat basically does that stuff for you but at the end of the day then on you are on your own in terms of which all universities to apply the good side is that you are not restricted to only five universities you can apply to dozens of all. universities but yeah. then you have to go each to each individual university and uh, do that application and uh, it's not as uh, you know kind of uh, easy in terms of the overall application experience that we saw with uk so it's evaluation central but the application is uh, you know divided it's kind of uh, balkanized in that sense you have to go to the university so just to do that. got it okay great then i think manish what we can do is like uh, now admission procedure we have covered for the fees and for the duration i think yeah. we can just focus on manipal your experience only yeah yeah, uh, yeah. because that would be um, kind of becoming a uh, sorry so yeah. how much do i pay in manipal at this point in time i can tell you that Uh, the overall fee was somewhere at around uh, i would say 6 lakh yen okay which uh, i don't know how much it transfer per year right yeah yeah 6 lakh yen per year okay um then they i mean for nris they had a different way like they had something called as a scholarship so if you get a okay. uh, cgpa of 8.5 in a particular academic year then uh, 20% of that is off so i pay somewhere at around 5 lakh yen per year is something that i would say i pay at uh, okay oh, sorry graduation then i scholarship okay yeah. and what i can certainly tell you is that uh, it's a 3 year course that she's right now in while the fourth year uh, if she opts to do it uh, she will basically be uh, doing a you know a laboratory research uh, mm. for her fourth year so that basically makes it uh, bsc honors uh, degree in biomedical sciences which is something i wanted to very specifically tell you is that when you are looking at the postgrad options uh, 
uh, many of the universities in uh, the US ask for a four year degree. So it's always worthwhile to spend that additional one year and get a four year degree and not settle for a three year degree. It, it certainly will work out in the long term to make sure like your career prospects are not gonna get squashed just because mm. of a three year uh, undergraduate degree. All right. So be very sure that you do a four year course wherever you go, whichever yeah. stream you take. Manish, what what is this uh, course? Uh, B.Sc. in biomedical. Biomedical. B.Sc. in biomedical. B.M.S. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I mean, hmm. in today's day of pandemic and all of that stuff, I think drug yeah. discovery and all of oh, absolutely. Are, I mean, and uh, these are universal uh, skills, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And there are so many. I mean, and trust me, I, I, yeah. Here's one thing on a lighter side. So, see, I told you about like we were basically watching Crime Patrol, right? So, how does biomedical connect with Crime Patrol? So, ah, you got forensics. And forensics is part of that biomedical courses and stuff. And she's like, oh, probably I'm gonna be, you know, <laughs> something for the forensics Why? department. So like, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> okay, great. So that's about the fees and the duration, right? And I think you also touched upon the career pathways and also uh, keep an eye on post graduation. Also, I think that's a, a good summary of I mean, what you have. Trust yeah. me, trust me. I think India has surprised me in terms of the amount of openings and the amount of avenues that your kid gets exposed to. Absolutely. Say, for example, next week. There is a you know a kind of a seminar that's going to be conducted in the University of Manipal, wherein top you know scientists in the biomedical field across all of the in all over India, they are going to come for a four day uh, you know kind of a, you know event in the University of Manipal, and students who are above the, the you know CGP of eight point five have been allowed to you know. Uh, you know socialize with those folks and my daughter is going to be speaking with all of those big shots from iisc bangalore and iits and stuff uh, sitting in manipal and she's going to get that exposure so i think i That's don't really think good. she would have got that kind of an exposure uh, even in Japan, if she would have got an admit, or we would have taken her down that route. Yeah. Oh, that's that's really true. That's it's, really it's true. A very very different ecosystem mm. is what I can certainly say. Like we should be not proud of, but we should certainly be cognizant of that. This is what's already happening in India. A lot of moment. That's right. For sure. Yeah. Right. I think, and and this is what's the importance of uh, speaking with someone who has experienced this as a parent, right? Otherwise, this will never come in anyone's awareness that okay, with this decision, what are you actually getting into, right? Uh, yes. There are yes. Uh, there are normally a very narrow approaches on okay, is it India? Is it what university? And that's it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about that, right? It's quite yeah, beyond it. Absolutely. And trust me, I think if you got uh, matter in you, I think uh, you shouldn't be worried about going anywhere. Yeah. I mean, I remember, like, I mean, I did my B in mechanical engineering, but something, I mean, I told you about the concept of moment of truth, like something needs to fire you. And I think my moment of truth came in my final year in engineering, when I went for a paper presentation to Bhabha Atomic Research Center, when I was talking about a nuclear energy and what's, uh, how, you know, kind of uh, we should be optimizing our, you know, pieces, not just with renewable energy sources, but also about nuclear energy. And I was d discussing that kind of a thing with the top notch scientists. I mean, and I'm getting feedback from them and I, th that kind of just drives you, right? And there is so much amount of talent in India that sometimes we uh, are blinded by the fact of UK and US that we certainly don't know like the Tare Zameen per kind of a scenario wherein you got that kind of a talent talent in India mm. itself which you can actually engage with. So I think, I no, think, I think that's, that's something true. that I'm very, very happy that uh, Nupura is getting that kind of an exposure. Great, great. Thank you. Okay, then I think then uh, it's a good segue to now admission is yeah. done. She's already in. Interesting topic that we, we are coming on. Interesting topic that yeah. we are coming on. Yeah. <laughs> So I think this is this is the last uh, section where we will be talking about how uh, as a parent and as kid you adjusted, and after that I think we'll go to the reflection and conclusion part then. <laughs> Uh, there, there are, there are, there are, there are, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, those kind of memes that come in, right? I mean, what you thought and what the reality is. Like, uh, I mean, like when right. people like think about like, oh, I'm going to go Japan. They basically talk about anime, Sakura 
and all of that stuff. And they, when they come here, they are just squashed in a Yamanote line, right? Yeah. That's the reality that you basically face, right? Or Tozai line. Exactly. Exactly. Tozai exactly. <laughs> line for yeah. us. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Yes. Like, <laughs> I, I can tell you, we have got, uh, you know, very different experiences of what we thought would be the case and what actually we ended up being in. Okay. Okay. So, let's yeah. let's quote three to four, right? At least absolutely. to understand. Yes. Absolutely. So one thing is that uh, India is the land of OTPs. Ah. I'm trying to say is like it's a one-time password economy. Yes, yes. And what I essentially mean is like uh, when my wife landed in India with my daughter and the reason my wife landed in India with my daughter was because it was the COVID times. So we couldn't just send our daughter to a far, uh, you know, kind of a destination all on her own. So my wife, uh, her mother did join her. Both of them have basically been in Japan for 24 years, right? Now, what does that mean? Is that uh, we didn't even have an Indian mobile phone. We are based from Mumbai and Pune, so it's not even our native place, right? So we are in a completely different state, a completely different city, which we are experiencing for the first time. And if you need a local uh, mobile phone, you need to have Aadhaar card. Without an Aadhaar card, no one is going to even give you a, a phone line for that matter. It's and same. my wife fortunately had an Aadhaar card, but we never thought about getting an Aadhaar card for our daughter. And uh, she doesn't have an Aadhaar card. And uh, the address, her permanent address on her passport is basically uh, Tokyo's address. So she can't even apply for an Aadhaar card. I mean, there is no way. I mean, there is no identity that she holds out over. What do you do? I mean, just getting a new phone itself was proving to be such a big mess for us that then we had to, you know, kind of work with one of her, one of her friends in the college who's a localite. Uh, we spoke to her father who basically uh, got us through a few of those pieces wherein we were able to go to the local municipal corporation, apply for our Aadhaar card, get the right things uh, registered with some lawyer's help and stuff like that. So it was a seven day process to just get her uh, Aadhaar card. Right. Mm. Uh, today she's once you get the other card, you are all good. You can basically get a HDFC account. You can do Google Pay. Uh, then life is like kind of amazing. Like it's basically the digital penetration in India is so huge that uh, the UPI system, like you can just scan out the QR code and pay anything anywhere. You don't need to say I am a line pay or something like that we do in Japan. It's a universal pay system that they've got. And it's much more, uh, you know, flexible. So once you got your uh, pieces, yes. But adjusting to the new environment essentially means like we were a little bit less aware of what the ground situation is. Like we mm. never knew, like for any small thing, whether you want to have a bank for, whether you want to basically do any of those transactions, everything was a OTP thing, which required a mobile phone and getting that was dependent on Aadhaar card. We yeah. were like, oh my God. So that's, uh, that's something that I was like, enough. if anybody is going to go to India uh, and if your kids are not yet in grade 11 or 12, make sure like at least as parents get an Aadhaar card if you don't have one. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, when you started the topic, I thought everyone in our ages, we have Aadhaar card. But yes, Aadhaar card about the kids, I have also not thought about it. But I think that's a good one. Okay. Ha, yes, that was one. Uh, secondly, which I can certainly quote is that, uh, so I talked about one, uh, you know, uh, you know, a negative experience like, oh, we didn't know, like we, we had to be prepared. Now, let me tell you about the other element, which we sometimes think, uh, like in India, things are, you know, kind of very slow in terms of the service industry, right? So what I can certainly tell you is like, maybe that's the case of overburdened uh, metropolis uh, cities of Mumbai and Delhi, wherein service industry is pretty slow sometimes. Uh, people don't uh, do the work uh, on the on the speed that you are usually, you know, kind of used to in Japan, right? But I think uh, Manipal was a hugely amazing discovery for us. Being a smaller city, the infrastructure and the service industry is so very well organized. Is what I can tell you in terms of getting a flat on rent. Uh, basically, if the washing machine has broken down, the you know, TV is not working, you call up and the guy is going to be there in 20 to 25 minutes. I mean, that's like, seriously, do you get that speed of service in India? 
I had no idea. Other one is that, oh, the washing machine has broken down and it's the days of the pandemic. Nobody is allowed to visit the society where my uh, daughter is basically staying because it's social distancing timing. And she called up the Samsung customer center. They asked her to download an app. From that app, the camera starts. They completely do a self-service repair. They tell my daughter, open the screw, do this, change this plug, and it's done. So it's as smooth as that. So India has changed in terms of the service industry a mm -hmm. lot. And I think if you have got any concerns or any thoughts in terms of like, should we basically look at India? Uh, yes, I think the service industry wise, at least our experience has been like India has changed a lot. I think I think we are absolutely okay with that kind of a situation. Now. Great, you've got Zomato, great. you've got Uber, you've got ah, everything. Absolutely. Uh, service industry wise, um, it's a lot reliable than what we, we are used to. Is what I would say. So that's a good experience is something that I think. True, true. Now, the third experience that I can tell you, and it's something to do with, uh, you know, the, you know, the overall uh, friend circle that your kid starts going into, you can do everything and anything, but then there's always going to be a culture shock in terms of how uh, today's India thinks and how a, a Japan based, uh, you know, kid who's never seen beyond Tokyo and the surroundings of here things there there is a vast difference in terms of how they think um, the socially uh, you know we are uh, much more active politically things are much more polarized and um, adjusting in that kind of an environment took some time for uh, Nupura she had to rethink uh, how to basically work through those uh, pieces um, whether it, the, those fault lines could be on the religious matters, whether those fault lines could be on some, you know, economic matters, because there is a disparity, right? There is disparity in terms of like, there are people coming in from middle class, there are people coming in from the lower strata, there are people coming in from very, very, you know, kind of well-to-do backgrounds. And I think uh, adjusting in that sense, like what you say, how it actually is perceived by different people was something that she had to learn in terms of understanding how mm. perception can matter how mm. subjectivity mm. in the discussions can creep in it right. is a very good thing in terms of life skills i think she's got those life skills is what i can certainly say because in early in in the early days we did find our daughter complaining like um she was able to find fault with every person that she met <laughs> but then she figured out that there was no uh, right way of thinking and i think uh, that's what india basically does to you it shows you that there could be so different ways of you know looking at one single situation is that then you have to figure out like what you basically think is only just one side of the coin there could be very different ways of mm. how you can actually you know interpret that so mm. it's a very very good learning experience that i can tell you for sure is like uh, diversity and inclusion is enforced in japan that that should be a value that we should have but it comes naturally in India. So I think uh, that's something which I believe is a big plus point uh, of going to India. That's for sure. Yeah. And yeah. especially living in Japan, I think, you know, it's being more homogeneous society, right? Even in professional world, like, you know, the salarymen, they're all salarymen, right? Even a CEO looks like a salaryman. Uh, yeah. But there's not much difference between, you know, employee levels. So it's a very homogeneous society, homogeneous way of thinking. Uh, the expectations are built uh, as well in the, mm. in the same. Yeah, I mean, yes. as you like pointed out, yeah, India is a melting pot of uh, different experiences uh, and different thoughts, processes, and there is no right or wrong way of uh, doing things. So that is a huge uh, learning experience, definitely, for kids. Uh, and yeah. for us also now, because, you know, when we go back to India, it's, oh, this is how, you know, people are thinking. They're thinking two steps ahead, what will happen. So, yes. yeah, that's yes. good. Right. Certainly, certainly. Great. So I, think, I think those were amazing uh, experiences from different perspectives, right? Uh, one was from more on the the logistics side, right? How things are changing. Yeah, yeah, Second is yeah. like what kind of support systems in terms of services have changed a lot. And then, yes, I think for our kids who have a different environment uh, here, 
and uh, exposure towards how the other like this comes as default in indian discussions right yeah, yeah. like the religion economy the politics the backgrounds of people there are different state stories and all Absolutely. that will not come so easily to our kids yeah. i think that is also an amazing learning that's for sure and i, I what, you know what i mean how, how what's the difference that i have seen is like i remember like after finishing her grade 12 exams she had to go from nishika sai to myodan and she got on to a tozai line on the opposite direction and then we had to call her because we were tracking her on the find my iphone we said like why are you in toyocho and she like oh did i go to the wrong way that was what uh, you know and then she had to go back and that was a silly mistake uh, one time mistake is what i can say but today just a year down the line uh, she is basically going from manipal in a uber to mangalore airport from mangalore airport she is flying over to mumbai from there she is going to my uh, you know parents home all by herself and i was like oh, when did that, all of that happen i mean like that independent nature was something like it's uh, oh okay i mean i feel a little bit more uh, comfortable in having her call the shots in many of the other matters that we go through. True, so it's, it's a very very you know interesting thing is what i see great great thank you manish on that one so i think let's move to reflections learning till now i think you have covered a lot of points in this if there are some specific points to bring in here or we can move to the next one which is like suggestion to parents and kids uh, up to you um, like yeah one thing on reflections is what i i mean like it's a kind of a matome or like you know just trying to conclude yeah. how i see this Yeah. i think uh, i mean like i am a marketer man i mean like i do help uh, adobe with its digital marketing and stuff uh, and you know i mean i work with uh, customers on a day to day basis talking about marketing so i am absolutely uh, you know kind of up and running in terms of understanding the social trends so the social trend of the smartphone economy and the social media we are moving from a v economy that's like w e to a me economy like the me is more important than the we okay mm. i think uh, that's where you know kind of uh, people look for personalized experiences mm. and this and that mm. stuff and it goes exactly opposite of what tarak mehta was saying like it's about asli maza sabke sath aata hai so it's about the we not the me right so what i can tell you is that when you actually uh, send your kid to you know a far away you know economy like a uk Mm. You, what you are essentially trying to create in your kid is the independence that they are looking at it's about creating individuals it's about creating individual personalities who value the me economy more okay mm. but the fact is like what i can look in the backdrop is that my wife going and helping my kid out and being with her when it mattered the most we are trying to give uh, you know a perspective that you are not just an we don't want to have you be to be an independent individual we want you to be a dependable individual so a dependability and independent are two different elements like you could be independent but still be a dependable person so how does the dependability come in is when you see a society in india which is so very you know torn between different economic sides the political sides and all of that stuff which kind of brings a little bit of uh, appreciation for the others point of view so am i a independent person or am i a dependable person i think that is what in hints at i can say like uh, india builds some dependability in you i think that's how i look at it like what's the benefit of going to india uh you could be independent but you would would still be a dependable citizen i think that's something that i would try to mm. paraphrase i'm not trying to give some gyan but this is something that no. i feel like it's built that kind of a life skill in her is what i would look at no it's a view right like as as we said right there is no right and wrong here exactly exactly right? exactly, exactly. It, it's a view for sure like uh-huh. and it can uh-huh. be your view and if someone want to agree you agree if you don't want yeah. have your own views no worries mm-hmm. absolutely yeah absolutely. yeah got it got it but i think this is a, a good way how you think right at least that helps yes. us to understand how you are seeing this experience so i think that absolutely. is a good paraphrase and get a good summary yeah. in in the whole right we to me yeah that's really good <laughs> sure okay thank you and then i think we move to the last section uh like you have already kind of given a lot of tips uh 
uh, and kind of suggestions already. But if something uh, you have missed out or you want to summarize it in a way towards the parents, towards the kids, uh, that would be a good sum up. Of what I would say is that uh, if you choose to basically look at uh, the multiple options that are there in today's world, I think the education industry is ripe for disruption. I think mm. COVID has made sure that uh, it has kind of flattened the overall hier hierarchy in terms mm. of how universities have been thinking. So what I can tell you one thing is that uh, my daughter is right now studying in the University of Manipal. She is mm. occasionally doing in-person courses with IIT Hyderabad. And she is doing an online course with the John Hopkins uh, Institute in the US over Udemy. So you can actually sit anywhere in the world today and do anything that you want if you are really passionate about what you want to really learn. Mm. So I think uh, we should not only look at physical locations uh, going forth. I think it's also important to check out the online offerings because they will add a lot of value to the overall portfolio of the kid when they start to make their professional moves uh, post their undergraduate undergraduate courses. Right. So I think it's a mix that you have to look at uh, what I can basically do as part of my curriculum, what I can do as part of the social available events, seminars and all of that stuff. And what I can do online in terms of, uh, you know, engaging far away universities, which could have much more, uh, you know, better uh, and other pa paradigms to offer to me, which uh, I cannot certainly cover by going to every other university. It's all available on an online format. So I think it's using all of these three mediums, your own, your social and in the far away through online. I think it should be a combination all of, of all the three. So sure. I think sure. whether you choose, uh, you know, Japan or US, UK or India, I think I don't see any good or bad option. I think every option is good. If you if the passion's there, the kid will go through. Great, great. Yes, I think that that's a good way. I think and and it goes towards both directions, right? For the parents also to think that okay, uh, I mean there are chances like right. What you have thought about, you'll get into that university. We are not getting it. But even if you don't get it, there are like as you said the social the social part is there the online part is there and you can really club your whole education in a way that you still get what you actually started to actually go towards right got it got it Absolutely. thank you thank you anything else Mak makran you want to ask uh i was uh, i think yeah, i'm good uh, just one thing in terms of the postgraduate options uh, would you be considering more India option going forward because you know as a continuation from graduation or uh, you know trying to give a different uh, new exposure for post graduation uh, as she completes um, undergraduate. The way so, I uh, think about it is that uh, what essentially differentiates undergraduate and postgraduate, and given the fact that I am right now in discussions with my daughter in terms of like what about the post graduation? Is she looking at it? Uh, does she want to do a career and get into the job market immediately? So discussing with her, what I realize is that the essential thing which differentiates an undergraduate and a postgraduate is that undergraduate is a uh, foundation block. It basically builds some foundation for you on which to mm -hmm. work on. But post-graduation is completely in terms of finally where you see yourself. Okay, What kind of research do you want to get into? What kind of field do you want to specialize as you move ahead on? And that could And that is location agnostic. Tomorrow, there could be uh, something spectacular in terms of drug discovery happening in Bangladesh or any other country for that matter. What if your uh, daughter chooses cho chooses to go there? I mean, but that's how life should be, right? I mean, like then there's not about like location dependency of like, oh, I need to be in New York and or I need to be in the UK. I need to be in London. I think it's all about then discovering your life. So I think the independence is given to the... A kid who is anyways above 18 years of age so it's like they are like adults now so they can take uh, charge of the the choices that they want to make from here on uh, if as a parent i have to think i would love that she comes back to japan so that uh, i get to see her uh, once in a while every month or so but then that's just wishful thinking for the parents because we basically you know uh, came all the way from india and our parents also probably might be thinking the same like we should be paying them a visit uh, once in a while right so i think that's just 
just yeah. parents uh, you know expectation but i think the moment she walked out of the house and went over for her career i think that emptiness syndrome is something that shouldn't pull the kid back you shouldn't try to again uh, try to populate the nest by asking your daughter or somebody to come back i think it's best left to what they want to do with their career if that takes her to the uk for post grad course so be it if she decides to come back to the japan for a particular reason well that's what it is at the same time right. if she says like i want to continue and i want want to do something in india i mean yeah why not i think that's the way mm. i would look at it. Mm. understood okay uh, go kaisa na ki there are things like that's a circle of influence or circle of concern when the kid is not yet mature it's a circle of influence that a parent usually has but mm-hmm. now the, uh, it's out of our circle of influence it's just the parental circle of concern that we are in so doesn't help so let, let go let go it's like finding nemo na after a while the fish has to let go the kid Absolutely. right i mean it, it has to allow the kid to discover the world by itself so that's that's how i look at it Okay. Great. Thank you very much. I think then I had makran that you should oh, have told me in advance that you are going to ask me the question. I would have prepared well in advance. <laughs> no, I think uh, this is this is no, all about I it, right? It's just a flow of uh, discussions I all think. Right. So there was no planned questions in my so just as as a flow it happens. Yeah. Understood. So no worries, no yeah. Worries. Just yeah. a discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Right. Okay. okay. thank you i think that brings us to the closing part of this uh, discussion uh, i think thank you manish for your time and sharing of this valuable experience insights the anecdotes you shared with the greater part of this expat community i mean in in future we also plan to share experiences uh, from parents uh, who have opted for other countries and universities for other courses so what we would just try to tell our uh, viewers is like uh, remain subscribed to this channel for this similar for the videos which are useful for your life in japan uh, i mean if you have any comments queries or doubts uh, feel free to drop a comment in the comment box me and makran will try to reply as far as possible if the questions are towards manish i will re- will uh, request manish to help us out in those Okay till we meet next time thank you and bye bye any last words from manish parting words no i think uh, i can only say in parting that i know about a survey that was done in individuals who are in their 70s and 80s and it was asked them like what was the most uh, happy time in your life and uh, it was the time when you were the most irritated and they always quote like when it was about the kids being in home and when they left so i think after ah. we always love our kids to have them grow up as fast as possible we go to the grind of our careers and the family life right but at 70s and 80s people say like actually that was the most happy time that they spent in their life so with all uh, you know due respect to everyone's busy career schedules uh, trust me you are going to love this when you are going to look at it in hindsight when all those dots will basically connect for the journey that you are looking for your kid so enjoy the ride even though it's a pretty interesting one with its up, its own ups and downs absolutely thank you makran anything from your side before we leave yes i mean uh, so this session was basically focusing on you know nupura's experience in india but i think manish has covered a lot here a lot of ground not just in india but also what could be you know overall pros and cons for other countries as well or you know study options graduations as well as post graduations in uk or us so i think this is a very holistic discussion and i think we had fun so i think for the parents who are seriously looking for uh, how to get into this thought process i mean if they watch this video from start to end i think manish has given enough information uh, to get into that mindset what what parents should think what kids have to do uh, now i think up to everyone to go through this definitely we'll also try to summarize it uh, separately later okay thanks thank, prem thank, thank you very much manish thank you yeah thank yep. you thank you manish you were talking about that online resource in india which was useful to you as parent and student maybe. so maybe you want to talk more about that 
Yeah, sure, Prem. Uh, I think uh, even when you buy a thing as simple as a USB desk, you usually look for not just going to Amazon and buying it straight off, but you look at the customer reviews and stuff, right? So I think same goes when you are trying to consider, uh, you know, kind of which university, which location, which kind of courses and stuff. And it's sometimes it's a very difficult thing if you want to go to individual websites of every university and try to figure that out. And you don't even get a comparative model out over there. You don't really get the real world inputs and you need a third party kind of a portal which can kind of give you those things at one single location. And I believe like uh, I myself did a lot of uh, searching in terms of uh, using the words like University of Manipal and the life sciences courses and going to Quora and those kind of sites. But more than I think Quora, I believe like the site which helped not just me, but my wife who was doing a lot of digging of information and also for my daughter who was vetting the right stuff in terms of like are she, is she picking up the right courses. I think uh, we are not trying to promote any portal here, but I can tell you for sure is that uh, this is one portal which I would say like if you are going to consider uh, India as one of the choices where you want to send your kid to, uh, you might want to look at this uh, resource called as shiksha.com. Uh, whether you want to do your uh, engineering, whether you want to do your medical, uh, you, if you want to go beyond those things of uh, design studies or anything else that you can think about, uh, right up to even your post graduations, I think this is one of the you know portals which has got everything in terms of uh, self-service content. But it's not just the self-service content side of the equation, but you can basically say like, I choose something like a mechanical engineering yeah. course, and then you could actually select a college and you can actually look at, uh, you know, real people who have, uh, you know, kind of painstakingly, you know, kind of put up a lot of content in terms of how they basically have rated these kind of, uh, you know, uh, courses and these colleges. Uh, there's even you know kind of a chat button uh, of sorts which can help you directly post your questions and then you know what we know for sure is like it's like within an hour or may, may, maybe within a few couple hours you immediately get a lot of responses for your queries and I think that's a very living experience that you can have that there is always somebody who can come back with some answers for you so I would say like shiksha.com uh, shiksha is one very very important you know kind of um, source that we were you know using right even in the days of 2019 so it's come a long way is what I can say Great, great. Maybe you want to show it like uh, popular colleges if you want to see. Uh, yeah, looks yeah, yeah. Like, looks like Absolutely. there's already a list, right? Exactly, exactly. Wow. So it can give you all the list ups. Uh, it will give you with the rankings and stuff. Uh, it will give you to a certain extent also things like uh, what are the procedures for uh, admitting in? What's the uh, likelihood of you getting into that uh, kind of uh, university? You can scroll on your, you know, stuff like, uh, okay, my fee structure cannot be more than 10 lakhs or whatever your criteria would be. And getting every brochure at one single location is something that I certainly know for sure is a nice. very, very good resource that you can make use of. And it, it works even very nicely on your smartphone. So I think, yeah, maybe just type in shiksha.com and yeah, I think you should be, you know, ready to go with a lot right. of content. Rather, it would be a little bit overwhelming is what I can Absolutely. Say. No, but this is really good. Like uh, the one you were talking about, uh, Manish, uh, earlier in the same page, or the earlier page, the same page, no, this, I, this yeah. one. If you go down, it is showing yeah. this. Uh, of course, it's showing fees. It's showing median salary. Uh, what's the ranking yeah. of it? Yeah, and, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think getting brochure at one place, this itself, yeah. uh, this one feature itself is, I think, uh, valuable, uh, quite valuable itself, right? Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. And you, I mean, look at it. Like, it, you can enter mm. your GE ranks. You can, you know, mm. look at predict for other exams, predict results. Like, how likely are you to get into that college and stuff? So it's a, you know, it at least gives you something directionally, right? Absolutely. I mean, it may not be the factor for the decisions, but at least it gives you a direction. Like, am I heading in the right mm. direction in terms of what I could be looking out for? So mm -hmm. this is something that I think you should certainly look for. I think uh, yeah. Well, what I think I understand it's been created by the you know the founders of Nokri.com. So I think we uh, IT guys know for sure the job portal in Absolutely. India, and I think they are supporting it right from the get go of where our kids are gonna get their education and stuff. 
I think it's a natural progression that they would put up something like that. So it's a good, it's a good portal, um, something which has certainly helped me personally a lot in terms of understanding which uh, options to go for. Great, great. Thank you, Manish. Manish, just for uh, completeness of this video, this yeah, part, yeah. if you can go to, I, I saw that there are overseas colleges also listed. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, study yeah. abroad, right? So I think this is also, I mean, from Indian perspective, if you're looking at outside yes. world, yes, there's also, say, for example, I don't know, we have Japan here, but let's see New Zealand. Say, for example, UK. For UK, example. let's say, yeah, let's say UK. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, there are brochures for those colleges as well. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That's yes. really helpful. But what I would certainly say is that uh, although it's got uh, details on those, uh, you know, universities in the UK and stuff, I believe like the similar portal, which I earlier, you know, kind of said in the video of the UCAS, UCAS, the yeah. UCAS system is also equally good. I think uh, hmm. that hmm. tends to have like more up to date information out over there. So UCAS is one good location where right. you can find a similar portal for what you want to do with the UK side of your discussion. So you Got can it. certainly use that. But yeah, you are right. I mean, as I said, like for US, I think it's still very, you know, you need to go to individual websites. Uh, probably I'm not sure I've not used uh, the US uh, side of the equation here on shiksha.org. But for study abroad, maybe you, even if you want to look at study in US, maybe you've got some good resources. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how good these resources are. I've not used them myself. Yeah, but definitely. yeah, it seems to be like a uh, lot many, you know, inputs at one single location, which certainly is uh, helpful for sure. Yeah. Uh, I can also see they have given links to for each uh, college also international student website for each, right? So yes. definitely this can be an entry point and then exactly. you can start exactly. going. Oh, okay, looks like, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. but this looks like a val valid site. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yep, UCLA, okay. UCLA, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Yep. Great, nice. I think this is this is kind of, can be a very good start both for parents and for students, uh, at least who want to see India as a as their destination place for this thing, uh, for studies. Uh, I think they can start from here and from there, like of course start from India and if they want to explore, abroad from there also that is also that's, a way but india true. itself i think that was a clear thing like what's the ranking of the college je ranking is also being uh kind of considered yeah. and it's kind of ai is being used it's like an intelligence exactly. right this is what we want to exactly, use right? exactly, yeah. exactly 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 Great. okay so one key feature i thought was you know the description about the course is also mentioned there so yeah. which is i think excellent you know for the student as well as the parents yeah, because the students, if they are confused which course to take, or you know, they just go with content and stuff, yeah. Content like their friends are choosing some course, so they want to take it, or they are not still sure. But I think they can they can go to that website and just yeah. go through what exactly is the content of the course. So I think which is very good, rather yeah. than going to Google and just searching it, you know, random randomly. So Absolutely. I think uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's excellent resource. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think cool. I, I mean like this, this may you need not include in the video, but the whole idea is like I heard about you know a few surveys coming from Google, which says like youngsters these days, and I don't think it's just the youngsters, but in general like the digital natives of today, uh, they have you know reduced the search of Google. I mean they don't search on Google as much as they do inside Instagram or inside Twitter or inside the whatever. Right? So whatever you need to search from a college perspective, you would actually be better off searching inside shiksha.com rather than searching a flat on Google, because that can actually basically be too divergent, right? I mean, right. drilling down from Google is a big task, but drilling down inside shiksha.com is much more efficient is what I believe. So I think it speaks too much in terms of what Google is facing. Like people are no more searching inside Google, but they are searching in individual portals or apps, I think. That is the differentiator. Yeah. Sure. yeah, I think I think that's the value these sites are actually uh, creating. Right, they are becoming specialist in one thing, which Google has no way it can get into that details and yeah. the way it's formatted. Right, I mean the way we want to see the information. Right, exactly. And that's more important. I mean for us, like in our context, we are looking for education, uh, thought process, and and information related to that. Having brochure. 
fees yes. uh, or, yes. or for that matter salary also i don't know it's a bit far stretched though but it's okay but good to see at one place yep yeah yep yep yep, yep. okay